Hello everyone, I am Muskan Modgil and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is going to focus on the AVE, which is the Australasian Veterinary Examination. This examination is very less talked about and all the hype is usually around the NAVLE, which is the North American Veterinary Licensing Examination. Up till now, no other YouTube video in my knowledge has talked about this examination in such great details. So um, make sure to watch this video till the end and without any further delay, let's get started. As always, let's start from the basics of the topic itself. So what is AVE? Australasian Veterinary Examination is the licensing examination required for all overseas veterinary graduates who wish to work as a veterinary doctor in the Australasian regions. So I have mentioned this word Australasia so many times and which all countries are included in it. Well, Australasia comprises of Australia, New Zealand and a few neighboring islands which together form the Oceania region. So who conducts AVE? AVE is conducted by the Australasian Veterinary Boards Council and this examination has four steps so let's discuss all of them one by one in detail. So before we proceed, I want to clear one thing that without AVE, there are some veterinary graduates who are already already eligible hai to work as a veterinary doctor in Australia or New Zealand including the overseas graduates. So who all are they? Number one, if you have successfully cleared the Canadian National Examination along with your NAVLE, you are eligible. Number two, if you are a student of the AVMA accredited veterinary college, plus you have also cleared the NAVLE, you are eligible. Number three comes the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. Even if you have cleared the RCVS examination and you are a member of RCVS, you are eligible to work as a veterinary doctor in the Australasian countries. And finally, if you are any overseas student who has successfully passed the NAVLE examination along with the ECFVG and the PAVE pathway, you are eligible to work as a veterinary doctor in Australia and New Zealand as well. So if you are still confused about what ECFVG or the PAVE pathway is, make sure to watch my previous video where I have exclusively talked about the NAVLE examination and that will clear all your doubts. Now the question arises ki agar navle se kaam chal raha hai, so what is the need to appear in a totally different examination? Well, it totally depends on your goal. Where do you want to work as a veterinary doctor? Plus, jaise humne pichli video mein baat ki thi ki the PAVE pathway and the ECFVG pathway respectively mein ek time fee is 32 lakhs and 7 to 8 lakhs Indian rupees. So, AVE is comparatively cheaper but it is not very cheap we'll discuss the free details later in the video for now let's focus on the pathway to follow as an overseas graduate and all the four steps first of all you'll need to prove your english proficiency test which can be done through the oet ielts toefl and the pte examination once that is done and you have all your necessary documents with you now you are eligible to apply for the credential verification or the skills assessment all graduates from the world list of universities are eligible to apply my list description box may add kar dungi. make sure to check it out after that you will have to appear in the preliminary mcq examination the details of which we will discuss later in the video and finally there is the hands-on clinical examination after which you get successfully your license to work as a veterinary doctor in australia and new zealand moving on to the english proficiency requirements now, TOEFL and IELTS ke baare mein mostly sabko pata hoga, but what is OET? It is the Occupational English Test which is exclusively for healthcare professionals. But what is the downfall of this examination? It is easier than IELTS but here pe the fee is comparatively higher. IELTS ka exam takes around 14 to 16,000 rupees whereas OET examination the fee is around 32 to 33,000 Indian rupees. So as we discussed earlier, there are four options. Aap koi bhi ek choose kar sakte hain. Ya to aap OET de dijiye and receive a grade B. Ya aap PTE mein appear ho jaiye and receive 65 marks in each module. Ya fir aap TOEFL mein appear ho sakte hain and receive the below mentioned minimum marks in the following modules. For IELTS, you have to take the academic module and the minimum band requirement is at least like 7 in each module. 
Now after you're done with your English proficiency and your credentials are verified as well, you'll have to appear in the preliminary MCQ examination. This examination must be given within two years of your English proficiency. And this examination has two parts, paper one and paper two. Paper one has like 120 MCQs, which tests your basic veterinary knowledge. Whereas the paper two has 100 questions in the form of F MCQs and those assess your clinical reasoning. The testing window to appear in this examination is available in the month of April and the time allotted for completing paper one and paper two is three hours each with a stipulated time break between both the examinations and the venues. These test centers can be located in the Australia, New Zealand and sometimes overseas centers are available. So preliminary MCQ examination ke jo test results hai, they are sent to you through email within 8 weeks of you giving your examination and agar syllabus ki baat kare, so according to the latest um, guidelines of AVE following is the syllabus uh, for example from the subject of anatomy you have a, like approximately 4 MCQs then comes physiology with the following subtopics 10 questions animal husbandry welfare again 10 questions Next comes the pathology and clinical pathology. These are the, all the subtopics, 15 questions. Then comes infectious diseases, again 15 questions, including all the bacterial, viral, protozoal, parasitic, fungal, exotic and other um, subtopics of the diseases. This examination also obviously covers your knowledge in toxicology, pharmacology, uh, public health and professional practice. And finally, there are questions, 15 questions from the surgical anesthesia or the imaging principles with the following subtopics. This was all about the paper 1 which will test your basic veterinary knowledge. In terms of paper 2 which is again MCQ um, type of question, this will have clinical based questions from the presentations like lameness, red dye, lumpy eye, diarrhea, weight loss, lethargy, pyrexia, trauma and all these other clinical cases that I have mentioned in the table. Another point to note here is that it is solely the candidate's responsibility to arrange his or her accommodation costs including the travel, visas, etc. Now let's talk about some promising authentic study material which is very reliable. These all study materials are mentioned in the AVE, official AVE booklet, which I have attached in the description box, so make sure to go through it. For example, you have the series, Mosby's Reviews, Questions and Answers for Veterinary Boards. Next comes the Saunders Comprehensive Review for Navale, and this is also available in the format of an ebook. Finally, there is Navale's websites for the practice questions. Now let's quickly talk about the number of attempts for this preliminary basic MCQ examination. So if the candidate fails the examination three times, the candidate will be required to wait for at least two years for appearing for the fourth time and he or she should also be required to seek counselling from the member of AVE committee. But regardless, in your first two attempts, you can appear in the consecutive years and there's no cap to the number of limits uh, that a candidate can appear in throughout his lifetime. So once you have successfully completed your preliminary MCQ examination, you will now be required to appear for hands-on clinical examination, which will be again in two parts, oral and practical. In oral, you will be asked about small animal practice, production animal practice and preventive medicine. In terms of practical, you will be asked to demonstrate various skills on equine practice, cattle and sheep clinical skills, practical anesthesia, surgery, pathology practical, and also physical examination of a dog and cat. The complete details have been mentioned in the official AVE booklet attached in the description box. Other than that, if you are appearing for the clinical examination, it is advised by the Australasian Board of Veterinary Council that you should have at least these following clinical skills so that like you do not waste your money and you do not need to resit or reappear in the examination. You should already be prepared for it. For example, you should be able to safely approach a dog, then you should be able to lift a dog onto the examination table, you should be able to remove a cat from the cage, you should be able to safely and comfortably lift the cat onto the examination table and all these other um, things that I have mentioned in the table given below. That was all for the small animal practice. Other than that, you should also be able to demonstrate the following 
skills. For example, you should be able to uh, do the per rectum pregnancy diagnosis in the cow. You should be able to pass a stomach tube in the cow, restrain a cow, collect blood samples from the tail vein, catch a sheep and tip correctly to examine the feet. You should be able to examine the mouth and teeth of the sheep and take a fecal sample, catch and apply halter to the horse and all other skills. You should also be able to take the temperature of the horse, apply the twitch, clinically examine the eye of the horse using ophthalmoscope and use hoof testers, be able to um, pre-medicate and administer general anesthesia and perform ovariohysterectomy or cystotomy in a dog. Now let's talk about the number of attempts in case of clinical examination. Well, as I told earlier that there are nine sections and if the candidate has achieved met the required standards of competency in at least six of those sections, there can be done the supplementary examinations with a grade of did not meet the required standard of competency. This is offered during the supplementary assessment period and supplementary assessment must be undertaken at the next available examination session. Now let's finally talk about the most important section which I am sure many of you would be waiting eagerly for. What is the fee details at each step? So for the eligibility assessment it is done in approximately 455 Australasian dollars which turns out to be 24,300 Indian rupees. Next comes the English proficiency. It can take you anywhere between 14 to 16,000 and 32,000 if you are appearing in the OET, which is the Occupational English Test. For the preliminary MCQ examination, you will be required to pay a fee of 3,083 Australian dollars, which turns out to be 1,64,650 Indian rupees. And finally, for the final clinical practical examination, you'll have to pay 8077 Australian dollars which is around 4,31,000 Indian rupees. So it is to be noted that the one-time fee of the whole process is around um, 6,36,000 Indian rupees. This obviously excludes your visa and uh, accommodation and all the test material that will be uh, required. Talking about the venue step 1 and step can be completed in your country of residence. Step 3 has an option like you, you can appear for it in India as well as exclusively in Australia and New Zealand whereas step 4 is exclusively to be done in um, Australasia. That was all for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you were able to learn something new from this video. However, if you still have any doubt, any query, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer in the most reliable way possible. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe and share this video.